Hello and welcome to Insight Ophthalmology. This is Dr. Amrit and you are watching the B-Scan course. Today we are studying how to scan the various types of detachments that is the vitreous detachment, the retinal detachment and the choroidal detachment and how to differentiate one from another. Let us first try to understand what are the basic differences between the retinal detachment and the posterior vitreous detachment or the PVD on a B-Scan. The first difference is with relation to the location of these detachments. The retinal detachment is always attached to the optic disc at both the sides. Okay. However, a posterior vitreous detachment might not have such a central attachment. It can be, it will actually be attached to either side of the optic disc margin. Coming to the shape of these detachments, the retinal detachment will usually be quite a thick compared to the thin posterior vitreous detachment right so retinal detachment will be thicker and moreover it will have a folded appearance and why does the retinal detachment has a folded appearance it has folded appearance because of the proliferative vitro retinopathy changes which occur after a retinal detachment right however not all rds are folded some of the rds like shallow rds can also be smooth the posterior vitreous detachment, however, will usually be thinner. Okay. However, in certain cases where there is a vitreous hemorrhage, long-standing neovascularization or a fibrovascular proliferation on top of that vitreous detachment, then that vitreous detachment might also look thicker just like an RD. Now, another difference is with respect to the amplitude of the echoes, right? So, as in my previous videos, I told you we are supposed to see the A scan overlay on a B scan image, right? So, in case of retinal attachment, we will always get a 100% spike, okay, because of the choroid and sclera. However, in case of vitreous detachment, the spike that we get is usually less than 100% and usually it will be about 40 to 80% then uh, i told you in my basic video on b scans about the gain setting on the b scan right so in case of a posterior vitreous detachment we have to increase the gain in order to uh, actually make out the pvd so what happens is when we put uh, the setting to a low gain setting that is about 40 to 50 decibels that means when we decrease the brightness of the uh, entire b scan what happens is an rd which is having more reflectivity will be still persisting on the b scan imaging machine right however a posterior vitreous detachment will actually disappear right so in order to see a pvd we need to increase the gain so whenever the gain is decreased the pvd will actually disappear now another way to differentiate between the rd and pvd is based on the after movements right so a retinal detachment will have lower after movements compared to the posterior vitreous detachment right so always vitreous is more mobile compared to the retina so actually speaking uh, we can actually label the after movements as minimal after movements moderate after movements and marked after movements so in case of a pvd it is always a marked after movements however in case of a retinal attachment it is a moderate after movement so you might be wondering where do we see minimal after movements so that i will tell you in the end of the video now what are the other associated features that might be seen with rd and pvd number one thing which we can see in case of rvd uh, sorry rd uh, is the presence of cyst okay and this cyst might be present like this on an rd and such cystic changes in an rd actually indicate that it is a very old case of rd and as the rd case becomes old the prognosis will also become poor and poorer in case of pvd however we might see sometimes uh, membranes which can get attached new vascularization or fibrovascularization which will make that pvd more thicker in the nature that's all so uh, to understand about the posterior vitreous detachment we should know where is the vitreous very tightly or um, strongly adhered so as you can see here is the posterior part of the lens and this is the vitreous base so the vitreous is strongly attached at the vitreous base right now the other places where it is attached is it is attached actually at the 
optic disc where it is moderately attached hmm? similarly it is also attached wherever there is neovascularization then the vitreous is also attached wherever is the blood vessels present so it is attached at the blood vessels it is attached at the disc it is attached at the vitreous base and it is also attached at the optic nerve okay at the sites of neovascularization also it is attached however it is strongly attached at the vitreous base so what happens is whenever a PVD uh, takes place, this is how it starts separating. It starts separating from the places where it is least adhered. So these places will get separated first and then it will separate from the uh, disc and in the last it will separate from the vitreous base which is very very rare. And whenever it separates from the vitreous base uh, very forcefully it will separate and it might actually cause you know giant retinal tears which are very huge tears and they can again lead to and RD. So what happens is even a PVD once it separates mostly even if it is attached and that is if it is an incomplete PVD the attachment will be on the either side of the disc and not exactly in the center of the disc. However in case of an RD the RD will always be present on either side of the disc or the optic nerve. So that point we should remember. Now let us see on B scan how do we differentiate between a PVD and a retinal detachment. Now the first picture over here actually shows a case of posterior vitreous detachment. So we can see a faint line of re low reflectivity seen here and uh, this faint line is nothing but the posterior vitreous detachment. Now I want you to compare it uh, with the second image over here. Now, in the first image, this is a PVD and this is actually a complete PVD because we are not seeing any attachment of this PVD to the disc. Okay. Now in the second picture, however, we can see this is the optic disc shadow and this membrane which is extending like this, it is more thicker. Okay. It's more thicker compared to the first image, number one. Second thing is that it is showing certain folded appearance. So it is folded and why it is folded because of the PVR changes. Third, it is inserted on the either side of the optic disc. Okay. And one more thing is that the reflectivity is much more compared to that of the uh, uh, reflectivity seen in case of PVD and also if you put an A scan overlay over this part of the P uh, this part of the retinal attachment or this part of the retinal attachment or this part of the retinal attachment the spikes will always be 100% so what I mean to say is the reflectivity along a retinal attachment will always be same however in case of PVD the reflectivity here might be different from reflectivity here or reflectivity here might be different from reflectivity here right so that homogeneous reflectivity is not present in case of a posterior vitreous detachment but in case of RD we have a equal reflectivity or homogeneous reflectivity. Now there are three types of RDs we have the exudative RD then we have the regmatogenous RD and then we have a tractional RD. So let us see exam uh, B scan images of each type of RD. Now let us look at the first type of RD that is the exudative RD. Now if you first look at this image of a patient, okay, the B scan is over here done with the patient being supine on a bed, right? So here we can see that we can see two reflective membranes like this and they are present on either side of the optic nerve and their spikes are about 100%, right? So we know that this is a case of RD. However, how do we know that it is a regmatogenous RD or is it an exudative RD? Right. So for that, what do we do is now we are going to make the patient to sit. OK, or we are going to make him uh, stand. So from supine position, the patient is going to now come to an erect position. And in the erect position, what happens in an exudative RD is that you can see that the fluid which was present in here has now shifted because of gravity to the inferior part of the RD. And therefore, the superior part of the RD has now resolved and the inferior part of the RD has actually increased so this phenomena is called the phenomena of shifting fluid okay so this is called the phenomena of shifting fluid which is seen particularly in the case of exudative rd now let us see a few b scan images of retinal tear so this one you can see there's a discontinuity in the retinal surface and there the retina seems to be pulled a little bit forward so this is one 
case of retinal tear now in the second picture over here not just are we seeing a retinal tear but we are actually seeing vitreous opacities which are diffusely present and some of them are present in the vitreous gel so this is nothing but a case of acute retinal tear and uh, it has actually bled into the vitreous cavity so this is nothing but the vitreous hemorrhage now these are nothing but giant retinal tear so giant retinal tears will actually look like hyper reflected multi layered structure right so the giant retinal tears will be hyper reflective and then they will also be multi layered so it has this a tendency to fold over each other right this is also a giant retinal tear you can see how it is curling and here the tear is there and it has curled like this right this is also a giant retinal tear now let us have a look at the regmatogenous rd that is an rd which happens after a tear so in this fundus image you can see the corrugated appearance of a regmatogenous rd that we normally see similarly on the b scan also we can see this folded appearance of the retina and this retina has been separated and this is nothing but the regmatogenous rd now in this case there is a pvd and there are certain reflections reflections which are present in the vitreous actually this is nothing but this patient actually had long standing vh and because of that vh there was traction and uh, so this this was a case of combined rd in which traction was also present and uh, uh, finally it led to a tear and then it became a regmatogenous rd and that's why we were calling it a combined rd in which the traction component was also there and regmatogenous component was also present now uh, based on the configuration of the fluid which is present in the subretinal space the rd can be two types it is a bullous rd or it can be a shallow rd and it tells you how uh, uh, i mean how fast should we do the surgery in these patients okay and what is the extent of fluid which is present because if more amount of fluid is present that can cause more damage to the photoreceptors which are present below the fluid so the first one here is a bullous rd and we can see the amount of fluid which is present right so bullous is nothing but a dome shaped structure so this first image is a bullous rd now in second image we can see that this is the rd and however this rd seems to be more flatter compared to the first rd image and the fluid is also less so this is a case of shallow rd now this image also looks as if it's an rd however it is nothing but it is a membrane so how do you differentiate it you can see the reflectivity uh, will be different and then we have to see the spikes the spikes might not be 100 percent the spikes will be always less than 100 percent and then you can see that it is not uniformly attached over here there is a defect here and moreover it is not even attached to the disc now since it does not have any uh, attachment the reflectivity is less and moreover when you do an after movement test in this uh, patient this membrane will be freely mobile right so it indicates that it is just a membrane which is present in the vitreous and not really an rd now these two images actually uh, show the funnel shape rds so this is the funnel shape rd you can see it is contracting and a funnel shape rd contracts because of the pvr changes and you can see how it is inserting on the either side of the disc right similarly this is a closed funnel shape rd and here we can see a cyst also and as already told you that whenever cysts are present in an rd it indicates that the rd is chronic rd and the prognosis is very poor funnel shape rd itself has a poor prognosis now similarly over here also we can see these two structures in the vitreous they might look like you know funnel shape rd and we might wrongly label them as funnel shape rd however just uh, compare it with the previous image over here okay you can see the reflectivity was uniform however in this image here we have more reflectivity and here the reflectivity is less similarly here reflectivity is more here reflectivity is less and um, you can see that they are not exactly attaching to the disc here the attachment is missing even here very thin strand of attachment is there right so such is not a case of rd this is nothing but vitreous membranes okay which are looking like rd but not an rd 
now this is another case of shallow rd and this i have put to show you the uh, a scan overlay so if you put an a scan overlay in this area you can see the spike which is coming right the spike is almost about 100 percent and this is the spike corresponding to the retina and then there's nothing that is subretinal space and then again we are getting the choroidal sclera and the orbital spikes so retinal detachment always gives you a 100 percent spike next to what we have is another type of detachment which is the choroidal detachment now how do you differentiate a choroidal detachment from a pvd or from an rd the first thing that i want you to tell you is about the shape of a choroidal detachment so choroidal detachment usually are dome shaped structures okay and however an rd will be dome shaped only when it is bullless and in that bullless rd also we might see certain folds right because the pvr changes however a choroidal detachment will not have folds because on top of that the retina will still be attached right that is number one point number two point is that since the retina is attached on top of the choroid the spike that we get will be a double spike like this right so you can see here the a scan overlay is put and just look at the spike here it is double and why the spike is double because the first one is coming from the retina and the second is coming from the choroid they both are stuck together there is no retinal detachment it is only a choroidal detachment right now another reason why it is dome shaped is that because whenever choroidal detachment occurs the dome will end at the point where the vortex veins are actually leaving the globe so those vortex veins will act as an obstruction to the passage of the fluid to the other side and therefore we have these dome shaped elevations in case of choroidal detachment now this in this choroidal detachment we can see an ecolucent zone there is no echoes which are coming from the center of the choroidal detachment that means that this is a this is a serous choroidal detachment or a serous cd now this is a case of kissing choroidals why it is called kissing choroidal because one choroidal detachment is coming from here and one is coming from here and they both seem to be coming very close to each other and looks as if they are kissing and that's why it's called the kissing choroidals now how do we look at a hemorrhagic choroidal detachment now here also we have the dome shape elevations okay and but the difference uh, in this from the previous one is that the echoes which are here are much more compared to the echoes that we saw in case of serous choroidal detachment and therefore this is a hemorrhagic choroidal detachment and this can also be called as the supra choroidal hemorrhage okay so suprachoroidal hemorrhage or hemorrhagic choroidal detachment is the same term yeah so that was all about the detachments i hope you liked it thank you and have a nice day